Burkina Faso, Mali, and Niger announced on January 28, 2024, their immediate withdrawal from the Economic Community of West African States, better known as ECOWAS, a regional body that claims to foster integration and cooperation among its members. However, the three countries have accused the organization of abandoning its founding principles, blinded by foreign influence, imposing harsh and illegal sanctions on their people, and failing to support them in their fight against terrorism, despite having a standby force, a military unit that can intervene in critical situations. These are some of the grievances that they have against ECOWAS, amongst others. Now, in response, the organization is pleading with the three countries to reconsider their decisions. It has even called for the activation of the standby force to help address terrorism in the region. I mean, what took so long? <laughs> Anyways, the organization wants to show Burkina Faso, Mali, and Niger that they have a reliable ally. However, the bloc also warned the three countries that by leaving, they will also lose the benefits of the regional integration, such as free movement, trade, and development. Also reminding the three countries of how instrumental they have been in the community's progress and how leaving now would mean giving up on all their efforts. To put it simply, ECOWAS is pleading with them to reverse their decision and to choose dialogue, diplomacy, and reconciliation over withdrawal of a division. Even Patrice Talon of Benin has added so much water in his wine you'd think he's drinking cranberry juice. However, the question becomes, where were all the cool-headed people when these harsh words, sanctions, and threats of invading Niger were being expressed and imposed publicly? What should we even say about ECOWAS meeting their EU partners before imposing sanctions on these three countries or the Ghanaian president, Mr. Nana Akufo Addo, snitching on his fellow Africans to the Americans like a child telling, you know, telling, on, his, telling on his friends to his teacher. Anyways, the list is long, but let me just stop here. A controversial bill that would castrate child rapist, the G Silent, has sparked outrage amongst human rights groups in Madagascar. The parliament approved proposal would allow the authorities to cut off the, the, the genitals of the offenders, either chemically or surgically, depending on the age of the victim. The justice minister defended the measure, saying it was necessary to combat the growing pandemic of such crimes, which recorded 600 cases in 2023. She also argued that Madagascar is a sovereign, is a sovereign country that is allowed to, to amend its laws and that the existing punishment of five years imp um, imprisonment was too lenient, too soft. However, Amnesty International condemned the bill as cruel, inhumane, and degrading practice and called on Madagascar to abandon it. The group claimed that the bill would not address the root causes of child rape and that it breaches international and human rights norms, adding that castration inflicts serious and irreversible damage and raises the possibility of innocent persons being castrated and then acquitted by the courts. On the other hand, I would argue that if proven guilty of violating a child's human rights, one has by default forfeit their own human rights and has entered a gray area, a gray zone. The bill is not yet a law as it still requires the approval of the constitutional court and the president, but if passed, Madagascar will become one of the few countries that sanction castration for sex offenders. Now, a local woman rights advocate said, castration could help end the rape culture on the island where many incidents are, si are silenced. Senegal is on the brink of chaos after President Macky Sall postponed this year's 2024 presidential election from Feb to December, extending his term in office by 10 months. Naturally, the move sparked violent protests across the country and according to reports, Claimed, it claimed the life of a student in St. Louis, a city in the northwest coast of Senegal. Now, the interior minister denied the responsibility for the death, saying the security forces did not intervene on the campus where it occurred. The opposition accused Macky Sall of staging an institutional coup, undermining and threatening democracy in the country. You see, Senegal has always been presented as the beacon of democracy across Africa, but it seems like the current president wants to get rid of that title, but the people are not having it.
as the clock ticks down to the original date of the vote, Senegal is on the edge as its future hangs in the balance. But isn't it ironic that not too long ago, the same Senegalese president was backing ECOWAS to impose all kinds of sanctions on member countries who violated the so-called democracy. However, the question becomes, will ECOWAS impose the same harsh sanctions on the people of Senegal as it did to Burkina Faso, Mali, and Niger, considering their president is committing a coup? It's a showdown tonight. The elephants take on the super eagles for the glory of Africa. The Africa Cup of Nations reaches its climax tonight as the host nation Côte d'Ivoire clashes with the last remaining guest, Nigeria, in a thrilling contest for the coveted trophy. The tournament has been a splendid showcase of African talent and spirit as a timely reminder of the continent's unity and diversity. It has been like a family reunion where only one sibling will emerge victorious while the others will cheer and aspire to do better next time. It was another great opportunity to put faces on countries we'd only see on the map, on the African map, but rarely we encounter people from those countries, for example, Mauritania, Guinea-Bissau, Namibia, and more. Therefore, I invite all those who couldn't make it this year to try harder to attend the next Africa Cup of Nations. We want to see you shine. We want to see you lose. We just want to see you. We want to know you exist. The competition has provided a welcome distraction from the myriad of challenges that plagues the continent, no matter where you look. But come Monday, we will have to deal with the harsh reality of the usual political drama with the same greedy actors who make life harder than it should be, while pretending to advance the cause of African integration only to backtrack when no one is watching. We will be here keeping an eye on them. Please like, share, and subscribe. See you next Sunday. Wait, nini?